down. You don't want those lineals over fighting itself and end up uh, damaging the machine itself or the uh, the twin lineals right there because it doesn't need that much throw to curl that to the max of this max curl here. So when you get your lift, you go all the way up and dump down. Otherwise, there again, you could th put too much throw travel on it for the curl and all you'll do is damage over time, you could damage those two there, which are about 150 bucks, or you could damage this body front pin. It'll take quite a bit to rip that off the top of there because it's also mounted through the bottom, like I said, by screws. On your downward throw, same way. This I got mine set up to where the curl up is to the left. And there again, you want to adjust that. I'm at 100%. The curl up, you don't want it to go beyond touching right there. When you can barely hear it, because that's maximum curl for this machine stock design. You don't want to overthrow it because all you're going to do is throw these rods out too far and you're just going to bind this hole up and it's not going to get you in your but damage because it can't do more than what this whole machine is designed to do. Let's go into sub trims and see where the sub trims are set up. As you can see, all my sub trims are dead zero. Everything's at zero. So you don't have, for me, the way I, there again, way I designed this point A to point B, I designed it so the sub trims are set at zero, which your lineals are at neutral on zero. Same way with your, um, your throw on your um, throttle. It was actually 92% down, like 115 or whatever up. But pay attention to the body. You don't want to put that force on that body. You'll just end up damaging the unit. I can't. Uh, say this enough times you'll damage the unit itself or you don't want to burn these up and I don't know which will go first but I don't think my designs will break over most likely electronics or the, you'll bust something on the brooder itself okay to control the speed on the machine it's pretty peppy it's got a 50t motor in there a crawler motor in there under my aileron channel that's where my th will control my throttle stick that's how I like it so I can control the the lift with the throttle and then I control the machine movement with my aileron and the Evlon as far as turning. You won't need to mix this up but on an aileron it's at 100% now and I'm telling you that's way too quick for this machine. <laughs> it's got too much power. If you get into some heavy stuff and you want to really push hard and get some serious power yeah you get in there and grind it hard if you want with 100% but otherwise you could drop that thing down clear down to 35-45% and get used to it. Uh, if you want to go lower 35% and get used to it that would be on forward and reverse on the aileron channel and then once you know about what power it needs versus how fast you want it to go you could scale it like that and then adjust that aileron as you want and that will control your speed of the unit your Evlon controls your steering your steering is a push-pull uh, set up on um, twin steel rods through eye bolts uh, threaded into a hundred percent infill design engine mounting plate which is hold your transmission and engine. You will not pull those rods through that, that, uh, that design either. But what you can do is you don't want to sit there and over use your steering because what will happen is you'll end up banging this into the side of the body and same way with the other side because there is more throw to that servo than the brooder needs to turn and if I just hold this up like this I'll just show you just I mean it's got plenty of power you know you're, it's it's a tough machine it's not going to break it like that what I like to do when I first get it started is drive down a line just like the John Deere 960 uh, 9620 and watch it and then I'll turn it to the left and then turn it all the way and I want to see where that thing will hit because when it's in motion, it will turn more in motion. So I'm going to adjust my uh, trim settings, my travel adjustments, on my rudder, on my Evlon, so the machine is turning nicely without hitting this into that. Because then you're just what you're doing is you're pushing force on this side, 
un- unnecessary force when you're going too far and you're pulling too much unnecessary force on the other side. There again, this bracket is designed to almost like a, a bullet. It's a bulletproof bra- um, design underneath this front end of the loader. Same way with on the transmission. But you're, you're, I don't know what you damage. You probably blow a servo before anything, <laughs> or you might just buck, break the knuckle in half. I don't know, but I don't think you're going to uh, do much damage to the inner compartment there. And then as far as um, you got your travel, you know, and your suspension. It's um, this here is designed where that little hole you see. If if you ever to pull this out, you'll need a little screwdriver to go in there. And that hole is designed on an angle to go in there and unscrew one of the screws that needs to be taken out of your transmission. One twelfth crawler transmission. Strobe set up on the on the actual gear switch over here on my transmitter. That just gives you different programs for your uh, light. You could shut it down even if you want. But I can't address this um, clearly enough. Your sub trim should be fine on everything on zero. Your steering could be adjusted possibly on your sub trims under your Evlon channel. Uh, that way it's driving straight. Just uh, when you take it off, don't go right into the dirt with it. Just watch it for a while. Get used to the machine. Fine tune it before you go hauling, trying to scoop up a bunch of stuff because you'll end up putting extra stress on everything if it's not set up right. Once you got your steering down, once you got your throttle set, you know you go to your travel adjustments on your height of your throttle for for your lift. You'll go into your rudder for your sub, not your sub trims, but for the travel adjustments. You do not want to see this put when you're when you got this thing up again. You do not want to see when it's in full height. You do not want to see these actuators pull up when it's at full height. You don't want to see it push pulling up on the body. You want to watch it, and as soon as you adjust it and start to see it pull up, when you adjust it, fine tune it, you back it off a little bit because you don't want to, uh, to overthrow those um, those lineals. And same way with the down bucket when I push for uh, curling up. You can when you're curling up, the best way to do it is come down like that. And you're curling up, and it will stop when it hits that um, right at the plate where it's designed. Any farther, you ain't going to do nothing but burn up something because it's not necessary. As far as your fork design, I, I worked, like I said, I worked on a new fork plate. It's simply, I'll, I'll, I'll make some extra rods and give you these three rods. There's three pins here that pulls these three out like this. One, two, and then this one over here, and your bucket comes off. I'm actually pretty impressed with this one because I redesigned it just for you guys. So then once that's on, what I like to do is flip this up. I like to set it on the edge of a table. That way you can actually put the, the fork system in like this. Um, like if it, if, you're, if it was hanging off the edge of a table, but I should be able to do it right here on camera to show you. So that pin goes right back in there. These are 3D printed, 100% infill pins. So I will give you some. You'll, I've never broke one ever yet. You put your two bottom pins on like that, and you just bring that down, and then you put your third pin in here. And here's where I'm talking about where I mastered a, a new design as far as for you guys on your fork plate once I get this third pin in here. Okay, as you see right now, I didn't do any adjustments yet. This fork plate is set in exactly the same as that bucket angle did. There's Because I took the geometry off, the pinhole markings, the length of the, the curl arm, the bottom up. Uh, lift arms and come up with a number figure that allows this fork to set perfectly straight and the back plate have a pitch to it but so it meets up as it should so you don't have to adjust nothing on your transmitter in between the or once you adjust your bucket correctly you got your fork set it correctly and then to go up and down you just same thing you just go up you could tilt this e- either way the only thing I do think that could use a little adjusting is I think if when you do when you go to dump your forks, you could almost over slightly over curl it. Um, that's where you want to watch that that curl on your lineals right there and make sure it's not pulling up on anything. And it's right at the max point now where I can see it's not really putting a bind on that body where it's not trying to force that body up. And it's not trying to overshoot this. Uh, this uh angle on this curl arm so you guys should be good and go i'm trying to be as clear as i can i'm sure it's it's pretty much simple for me but uh trying to walk it through 
uh, sometimes I might have forgot something. One thing I, I think I might have made a mistake on on set and helping the guy set up the owner who's bought multi units for me is I forgot to mention on my model when I go to what model I want for my um, for my units I usually stick it on the airplane mode I don't go do the helicopter mode and I think when he was setting up the skid steer. Um, yeah, I might have forgot to tell you that, and I'm sorry about that, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, ca I caught your email just now. It's like, oh, dang, I forgot. Yeah, that's right. It is under um, airplane mode or glider mode, and I think that helps with when you go to mix channels. You can throw stuff off, but uh, I think I got everything covered. You guys got uh, only two machines like it in the world. They're both going to two different places. Um, I love my builds, but um, I love the build. So it's more fun and me to see them build. As you can see, my units don't get a lot of use. I, I've never abused them, and uh, they, they are brooder conversions, so don't over-abuse them. It's not like you're going to go into straight concrete with this or even uh, hard ground. I've, I've ran uh, topsoil, no problem. It likes a lot of fish rock, all kinds of sorts of things that could take them power and lift up, but you just don't want to overdo it. Uh, if you've got any questions, just email me. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. That's Marcy.